You've lived in Europe a lot. Are you repatriated, or are you still an expatrié, or...? Uh... I have never been an expatriate. I don't know why people think that I oh, was Oh, you just scared time. me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know what it is. Ah, oh, I like this country very much. I know we have our problems, but I think running away from the problems isn't going to solve anything. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, going away to another country and exchanging your own country's problems for another country's problems doesn't help anything anyway. Yeah. You know those orchids you get in the subway and they've, they've put glitter and, and false diamonds on them and all of that? How do you, who gets orchids in a subway? Dick is in a corner, he doesn't know how to get out of it. <laughs> I've been at it one and one again, and it's coming up to three. Uh -huh. uh, you've been having fun again, um, but it hasn't been with me. Uh, you've got that smile you have when you've been out with someone new and someone outrageously bad. I think I'm being had. They're certainly glad to have one of us back. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go away so long next time or whatever. I'll do my best. You are born with a certain kind of feeling within you, and either you are going to allow it to come out or you're going to suppress it. Mm -hmm. And I think that in many ways I was very lucky because I was not restricted by uh, some big brother or whatever you want to call it to say, you know, to put a thumb down on you and say, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, you must do this, you must do that. Such as, uh, you know, mothers and fathers who are constantly fighting against the, the children when they get to be a teenager particularly, and you are trying to find yourself, particularly in your teenage years, and you are searching for a, a kind of freedom to express yourself, but express yourself the way you really feel is an honest way of express, expressing yourself. And unfortunately, I think the majority of the time, no matter how much a mother and father or a guardian may love you, they sort of suppress that inner desire to be what you feel you honestly are. And I think that a mother and father should guide you, but guide you as best they can in the direction in which you have the freedom to express yourself and be creative. I don't think mm -hmm. that they should try to make a carbon copy uh, of themselves out of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean you, the one over there. Uh. <laughs> I was wondering whom you were referring to. Yeah. I didn't know anything about the outside world in the cotton fields of South Carolina, so you have nothing to compare anything to. That was the world. That if was the world. If someone had showed you a picture of a, a, a glamorous woman in a red evening gown in front of a microphone, you would not have known whether that was from this planet or something else, probably. I've been adding up the score again, and it looks like I lost. You've been going out the back door again. I've been double-crossed. Uh, you've got that eye. Got something special going. That somewhere else look that drives me decidedly mad. I think I'm being had. I think I'm being had. You've been much too nice to me. Just a little bit too sweet You've been skulking behind my back In your stocking feet Suppose you write a book, like we were talking about before, and yeah. certain parts of the book is censored, and then you want to republish the same book again. Could you do that under another name? And then there are just some of the story parts of the story is oh, you, different. You mean, would you still own the copyright? Yes. Oh, yes, because the, the original copyright would cover would cover that. Sure you could. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll do that. Well, try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> try it once. Yeah. But don't you think that the public also is rather guilty of that? Because as long as you are a struggling uh, personality, they always feel that they are going to help you. But the moment that you make it, it seems an awful lot of people then want to destroy it. They want to pull you down. So the more uh, derogatory things they hear about you, the more they buy the magazine, or the more they cater to people like Hedda Harper. I think that must be. Oh, I'm, were you asking me? No, no, me no, no, no. I'm, I'm I just going to say, say that. I quite agree with you. Yeah. I think that if the public has a curiosity, it at the same time has to have a respect. And there, there's no respect in their curiosity. They are willing to believe anything, but listen to anything, to put people down. I, in many cases, I think it's just uh, sheer jealousy. 
the most horrible thing is that they are more quick to uh, believe the derogatory things than the good ones. Yes, you're yeah, never until remember proven what innocent, the, more yes, pungent. Good things are. Yeah. I think that uh, one of the main reasons why I am in show business is because I've had this tremendous desire to be loved. But mm. I didn't want to be loved just because I exist. I wanted to earn that love and affection. And I think that you have a greater uh, way emotionally and also much more uh, satisfying in many ways when you are in front of an audience and you can feel the vibrations of people loving you back. You get an immediate response whereby from a guardian or a mother and a father, it takes a long time before it really starts coming back to you that your mother and father really do love you because I, sp I think they spend an awful lot of time telling you what not to do. <laughs> yeah. But as a child who never saw any type of world like that, you know, it was very, very am amazing for me. And then they turned the radio on and voices came out of this box and scared the devil out of me. Yeah. And when I asked what is happening, my aunt said, well, there are little tiny people inside. <laughs> and when you press the button, the people will talk, or you press another button, mm -hmm. and they don't know to play music. Are so you I telling me there aren't little tiny people inside? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> Isn't that what we are now? <laughs> but all of that was very, very, very interesting. It's fascinating yeah. for a child to be brought out of a world that has nothing to compare to. We didn't have any books. I went to school, I think, two or three days when we were down there. So we had no magazines and mm -hmm. no movies, nothing to compare the rest of the world to. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have a little estate in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. and I always threaten every agent I've ever come in contact with that I'm planting cotton and I'm hiring them to pick it. <laughs> <laughs> but it the, the point to me is that if you are particularly of all of these bloods, you belong to everybody, and that's the way mm -hmm. I've always felt about myself. And when they say you don't belong to us and you don't belong to us and there weren't enough Cherokee Indians left to to get in contact with, then I felt that since I was so rejected by everybody that uh, I had to find my own way to be related to somebody. So I've accepted everybody and I hope that everybody has accepted me. I don't give a damn about what race calls me their own. Yeah. All of my, myself, don't want to be all of my, myself anymore. I want to live all of my, myself. All of my, my well, that is certainly one of the best performances anyone ever got for nothing on television, <laughs> I must say. these leopard skins for so long, you know, fur mm. dresses and leopard coats and things like that. And, um, I didn't feel the way I feel now about it. But no. when I bought my coat, it was over 10 years ago when it was at a certain price. Now I can get three times as much money for it. And, you know, I said, um, I don't want to sell it now. And another thing, the species was not endangered at that time. But it, oh, it's getting very close. Oh, you made me feel close. so much better. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I put down everything that I could possibly remember from the time that I was uh, able to remember. I yeah. think it was from the time I was about two uh, living on a cotton plantation in the south. Mm -hmm. The only thing is after the book is completely finished then the editors get a hold of it and they start taking out what they feel is going to be offensive to certain people who were involved with your life at one time because mm -hmm. some of the people are still alive whom I wrote about in the book the ones who were extremely mean to me when I was a child. And of course, these things you don't forget. You forgive, but I don't think that you could ever forget it. Yeah. And uh, I think they took out about $5 million worth of libel suits. Hmm. While tearing off a game of golf, I may make a play for the caddy. Uh, but when I do, I don't follow through. Cause my heart belongs to daddy. 
Eva invites some boys and knights to dine on my fine fin and honey. I just adore his asking for more, but my heart belongs to daddy. Yes, my heart belongs to daddy, so I simply wouldn't be bad. Yes, my heart belongs to daddy. Da -da 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 -da. Cause my daddy, he treats it so well. But as I said, the unfortunate thing is uh, you're not able really, because of the censors, mm -hmm. you're not really able to tell uh, the truth exactly as it, as it stood. Yeah. But I think eventually one day I will release the original uh, manuscript, which I still have at home, when uh, maybe when my daughter is old enough to release it for me after the people who treated me so badly when I was a child died off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> died off? Yeah. <laughs> yes, my heart belongs to daddy, so I simply couldn't be bad. Yes, my heart belongs to daddy. Da -da 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 -da. Treats it so well, so 